Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so very much for being patient with us. I am so excited to be here with you this afternoon. It's been quite a while since we've been together. So I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Siobhan Devaney. I'm a William Smith class of 95 graduate and the current director of the alumni and alumni relations office here at Hobart and William Smith. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce someone who um, has been in my life for approximately 23 years. <laughs> I know I don't look that old. I know I'm kidding. Um, uh, President Mark Guerin, and to join you and welcome him back to Hobart and William Smith Colleges. I want to start by highlighting a few of the very important accomplishments uh, President Guerin had while he was here. Um, and that so many of you might remember. The college's endowment was um, doubled as a, uh, a part of the president's, President Guerin's um, previous time with us. He raised over 205 million in capital campaigns that changed the face of the campus. He created 168, or I should say within the campaign, 168 new scholarships and completed 80 significant capital campaigns. President Guerin is committed to diversity, equity, and belonging, evident when he created the first head um, diversity position here at the colleges. And I just have to say that it was also during that time when I was the international student advisor that I also began to realize the love he had, not just for a local community, but a global community. And I thank him for that. He grew programs in community engagement, career services, study abroad, environmental stewardship, faculty development, mentorship, student success, and the liberal arts and sciences. After leaving the colleges in 2017, he returned to his alma mater of Harvard University to serve as president in resident in the Graduate School of Education. In 2018, he was appointed director of the Institute of Politics at the Harvard Kennedy School. He left Harvard in August to return to his beloved Hobart and William Smith. A former director of the Peace Corps, he is known nationally for his work on higher education and national service, and recently served as vice chair of the National Commission on Military, National and Public Service created by the US Congress. He worked in politics and government for a number of years, including the Clinton White House, where he served as communications director and the White House deputy chief of staff. President Guerin, we are, I am so delighted to welcome you back to Hobart and William Smith Colleges and to the city of Geneva. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chevy. What a nice introduction and uh, how fortunate uh, the colleges are to have you in this role. You've served your own alma mater with distinction and bring a perspective as a parent with your own impressive children uh, here at the colleges. And so I thank you for that nice introduction. And I thank everyone for, for taking the time out of busy days and times to um, receive this update from the colleges. And with my very heartfelt um, invitation to continue the conversations, the ideas, some of the questions that we'll get to in this session. But as I head into my, I guess, fourth week here on campus, third or fourth week here in Geneva, I thought it was very important to reach out to those uh, alums and family members and friends of the colleges who have been such an important part of the trajectory of this institution who can reflect with us and become thought partners to us as we fashion uh, the future for this very special place. Mary and I, as Chevy said, uh, returned to Geneva uh, in August and are very honored and very excited for this uh, next chapter. Uh, it was a privilege to live uh, in the city of Geneva, to have our own daughters grow up here and benefit from this community and certainly the broader community of Hobart and William Smith and its alums and family members uh, across the country, indeed across the world. So we're excited to be here. When <clears throat> this uh, call came for me to uh, return 
I was reminded of a, of a E.B. White essay that I uh, was initially published in the early 40s in Harper's Magazine, but the title came back to me of his brilliant essay. It was entitled Once More to the Lake. And I thought of my own journey and our family's journey once more uh, to Seneca Lake. And in his essay, White writes about his own journey going back to a childhood um, lake of great fondness and remembrance. Every year he'd go to with his family for vacation. And then he returns with his son as an adult and thinking through all the changes in his life, the changes in our world. But the lake, he writes, is constant and trustworthy. So as I thought about my own journey and once more to, in this case, Seneca Lake, I too was reminded of the many changes that have happened in our world uh, from issues of the economy, certainly the pandemic, racial reckoning, climate change, all that has happened since 2017 when I moved uh, back to, to Massachusetts. But indeed, what is constant and trustworthy is certainly the beauty of Lake Seneca, but also the college's mission, the important mission, and the commitment that I've seen quite evident of our faculty, of our staff, extraordinary board of trustees, uh, and alums and family members uh, that has been my experience for 18 years here, and that is uh, reaffirming in its constancy and trustworthiness. But I'm also mindful that so much, as I said, has changed in our world in every sector uh, of our society due to the issues that I cited. Uh, it is not 2017. And while I am familiar with the institution, obviously after my time here, I am working to become very contemporary with the issues, the current aspirations, uh, and the, all of the changes, um, exciting ones that have happened here, curricular innovations that have happened, but the changing landscape in higher education and the, and the needs and support of our students. It was very interesting to me because last year I read a very interesting book by Peter Felton and Leo Lambert at Elon University where they talked about relationship rich education and how human connections can drive student success in college. And then when I read that book, sitting back at Harvard, I was reminded uh, of Hogarth and William Smith and how this is very authentically uh, a relationship rich education. One marked by our students' um, good fortune to be in classes with faculty members who care deeply about academic excellence, who care deeply about our students' success, our staff members, our coaches, who in each and every way in the student experience, working with them to secure uh, internships, working with them in teams, working with them uh, in dining services and campus roles and jobs and tour guides and all the, the dynamism of student affairs and engagement that mark this campus. Again, a relationship rich education that our students have. So as I enter this chapter of my time here, I'm, I'm drawn by that frame. Uh, I think it's an authentic one for Hobart and William Smith. I think there are areas that we can even work harder and more deliberatively and affirmatively to ensure for each and every student here, uh, because these are uh, important times in American higher education, marked by all of the issues I cited earlier, uh, challenged by the financials of private higher education and liberal arts education, certainly in particular, but challenges uh, in, uh, that I very much welcome because of how important this place is. For 18 years, I was uh, very proud and uh, excited to represent the institution to prospective students and their families or to our alums and graduates and others. But what's happened in these five years that I've been away is our daughter Kathleen attended Hobart and William Smith. And so I had the good fortune to see this place as a parent with Mary and to see Kathleen's academic journey here and the transformational experience uh, marked and enhanced by global education, marked by faculty and staff members uh, that were focused on her journey and academic success. So returning now with the perspective of five years away, returning with the perspective as a parent uh, of Kathleen's journey, but also very much wanting to ensure that today's Hobart William Smith reflects certainly our values, reflects the mission 
of Hobart and William Smith that is indeed constant and trustworthy, and that is to prepare our students uh, to lead lives of consequence. A brilliant mission, and I think executed very well in and outside the classrooms, but our preparation for their next chapters, for their thinking through their journey and how they can lead a consequential life is, is certainly a privilege to return and use uh, this time to advance and enhance the colleges. So we prepared a brief sort of quick summary. It wouldn't be a webinar without some slides. And so we thought it would be great to, to update you um, on today's Hobart and William Smith. Of course, it begins with our welcome uh, to the incoming classes. Uh, it was a privilege, certainly for Mary and for me to continue the tradition and the steps of Cox Hall to greet the incoming classes, um, a great group of uh, incoming first year students, transfer students from around the country and great international uh, populations uh, and marking their own journey coming into to class. Orientation provided opportunities for our students uh, to get to know their faculty members, to get to know one another with pre-orientation trips and a really thoughtful orientation to, to orient them to Hobart and William Smith with a day of service in the city of Geneva to evidence our commitment to Geneva, which has been this great host to the colleges for two centuries. But that first week of class and the orientation uh, leads to a conclusion that I have that this has been a very good start to the academic year. And from conversations with faculty and staff and coaches, it's very clear that energy of the incoming class, I think will serve us well. I have been very uh, impressed and, and heartened by the uh, innovation in our academic program. Uh, we have a dynamic uh, new provost, Sarah Kirk, who herself is a scientist and forward thinking educator. So this, you can see the list of minors and uh, programs uh, as well as master's programs that are new academic offerings. I think these are 21st century topics reflecting the college's interdisciplinary heritage and legacy that's been left to us in blending the kind of interest of today's students uh, match with the ongoing commitment and dedication of our faculty uh, to think through areas of study uh, moving forward. So we're, we're excited about that. This is, I think, a very forward lane uh, to, our, to our academic program. The achievements at Hobart and William Smith, both inside and outside the classroom, I think uh, is evidenced in so many ways. And what just one of them, is our debate team, which has always been a, a pride point of Art and William Smith. We're led by a uh, faculty member, uh, Dr. Eric Barnes, and attracting students of talent to, to utilize their skills, and then the training and rich preparation that provides uh, for life. So our debate team has enjoyed great success over the years, but in, in, in recent years in particular, as we host uh, tournaments from time to time here on campus, but only four other teams in the United States uh, made it as far as our two Hobart students that are there in the larger picture on the left. Um, I'm proud to, to say that they, uh, with teams like Harvard and Yale and Princeton and Cornell, uh, we were the highest ranked uh, liberal arts uh, college in the tournaments that they're competing for. I think that speaks in many ways to the kind of students we're admitting. It speaks to the high touch and relationship rich education, in this case of a faculty member with our students, but it says in, in micro what I've seen so forcefully uh, across campus, uh, that relationship rich education that prizes academic excellence. The year ahead affords us opportunities to make sure that our campus is uh, contemporary uh, for the 21st century. In the spring semester, we will open uh, a new intercultural affairs center. Many of you will recall this um, building, which is right on Paulding Paul Street, literally our front door to campus that has been renewed and enlarged uh, to fit the needs and the importance of the work that, that is, is ongoing at the intercultural center, I see as our students term it. So this is a project that's been going on for, for some time, uh, thoughtfully, um, renovated and thought through with the space that will provide common space for events and gatherings. 
and a 21st century look at the, the import of conversations that will be happening there and student activities engaging. This is an institution that its, its very legacy has been marked by the importance of, and in, the, in our region, of diversity and inclusion and, and social justice and strengthening community bonds. So I think this new Intercultural Affairs Center will honor the interest of our students, the dynamism of these issues, the engagement of the faculty and staff to provide the kind of space that's commensurate with the import of these issues. We're also excited in September to be able to officially open and have a ribbon cutting the Milton Berger and Bennett Hooper uh, Rowing Center, which again is, a, is an important boathouse and training center. Uh, that honors the extraordinary commitment of our student athletes, Hobart and William Smith um, uh, rowing teams. And so we're grateful to the, the donors and uh, that allowed for this very successful fundraising of over $2 million to provide the kind of space to, again, honor the our athletes, our student athletes that, that um, and distinguish Hobart and William Smith in rowing. Athletics has been a lean, a strategic lean of the colleges in recent years with the expansion of uh, various programs. And so it was quite evident to me on opening day, greeting new students to welcome in first year students that are participating in these sports. Others will evolve over time, but women, William Smith volleyball and bowling, alpine skiing, which had been a very successful club sport, uh, bringing back uh, Hobart swimming and diving and baseball. So. These programs will add certainly to the energy and uh, campus spirit, but also bring us students uh, from around the country and beyond who, who, will, who will really mark a new chapter in Hobart and William Smith uh, athletic excellence with these new sports. It continued and was quite evident on opening weekend, where over the weekend, both Hobart football, you can see that photo on the left uh, where students were all decked out in orange to cheer on the Hobart Statesman. Uh, I had the great honor of flipping the coin uh, to start the game, but William Smith soccer and field hockey and Hobart soccer all had distinguished uh, opening uh, weeks of, of contest. And obviously what that means for our student athletes and what it means for uh, is, is clear. I also just want to take a, a moment to draw your attention to our communications. Uh, it's critical how we describe Hobart and William Smith to prospective students and their families, to narrate and detail our ongoing uh, efforts to our alums and families and, and friends of the institution. Um, but the communications team here, uh, expertly led by Kathy Williams, has really uh, brought forth a very successful suite of, of uh, branding matters, messaging that I think really represents uh, an authentic look into Hobart and William Smith. And I think ones that, that you would be very proud of. For those of you who are graduates or have children here at the institution, uh, that, that sophisticated approach, uh, obviously maximizing the beauty of this region and the lake, but also pouring into the three areas of real focus, our academic excellence, what's happening in the classroom, uh, the engagement outside the classroom from athletics to wellness, to clubs, to the variety of campus experience that makes this residential liberal arts experience so meaningful. And then thinking about the future as the publication there shows, thinking about your future, so are we. And obviously the lean that the colleges have have had and the commitment for internships, for uh, opportunities, for reflecting on during their time here, uh, aided and enhanced by uh, opportunities like internships and global educations so that they can inquire of themselves. What is a mission uh, to honor our mission of how do you lead a consequential life? How do you think about so, by your attention. All of this is certainly enhanced with the success in recent years of fundraising that speaks to, I think, the, the faith and the confidence our graduates and friends of the colleges and families have in it. Certainly, we have an extraordinary team here led by Bob O'Connor and his colleagues like Chevy and others 
who really work very hard to communicate and advocate uh, for Hobart and William Smith and what this means, certainly, for the student experience with financial aid, with student uh, events on campus, with the kind of support for our academic program. So over the course of time, you'll be hearing more about uh, capital campaigns and the kind of support that private institutions can and must have. But I, I note this with, with admiration for those who are part of it, certainly, and, um, and those who've contributed so um, generously. The campaign will allow us time, uh, capital campaign, uh, to look at some of these areas obviously in academic excellence, the student experience and student success, and this readiness for the world. So more to come on that certainly, but to, to foreground uh, with appreciation, those who've, who've supported the institution and how this fits into a strategic dynamic look for Hobart and William Smith as we look to our, our, next, um, our next chapter. There is certainly the bicentennial this year offers us that chance of storytelling. Um, and we're, we're excited about that. So I come back at this very interesting time in the institution's history. Um, so many folks have said in, in coming back here, how can we help? How can we assist Hobart and William Smith, which I appreciate uh, that generous spirit that is well known to me, certainly from my, my first time here. But obviously, here are some of the things that I think people uh, I would offer. Uh, we want to increase the number of applications for those who know Hobart and William Smith well, those family members uh, broadly who've, who've attended Hobart and William Smith and know what we all know, that the quality of faculty and staff and the academic program and this very rich preparation for life. We invite you to assist our missions effort. We benefit from graduates who host counselor visits, who host prospective students or admitted students in ways that allow us to engage them. There's no better or more effective advocate uh, or recruiter, as it were, uh, than our current students and our graduates because of that, that understanding of this very special place. Folks are very helpful to assist us with internships because that third big uh, cone of work that we have is preparing students for their future. Uh, thinking through that. Experiential learning and internships is critically important. Uh, conversations with students about careers, certainly job opportunities, all of those ways are, are richly appreciated and, and will differentiate us going into the future. And the last to join with us to attend events. Obviously, um, schedules are busy, but as we travel, as our colleagues and faculty and coaches move around, the country, as you're aware of regional events, that is a chance certainly for us to, to engage, uh, to show the commitment to the colleges, and to uh, increase the overall awareness of this very special place. Um, I think part of the opportunity we have going forward into this year, as I said, is our, is our bicentennial. 200 years is an extraordinary testament of service. It is a proud and rich history of graduates who've come to Hobart and William Smith and gone on to do interesting things in, in all walks of life. So on October 22nd, uh, we will celebrate the bicentennial. This picture was a kickoff of the bicentennial in, in uh, Trinity Church, Wall Street, uh, with Bishop Curry uh, marking the, the beginning of the bicentennial and our gala here on campus at the Fieldhouse will be a fun celebration, uh, a chance to celebrate this uh, proud 200 year history and to move forward proudly into the, to the next century. Uh, the night before, uh, on October 21st, we are very grateful to the Stern Family Forum to have an engaging conversation with two uh, actively engaged uh, partisans, uh, Republican former governor of New Jersey, Governor Chris Christie and Democratic strategist James Carville, uh, who will bring their own uh, engaging styles in conversation together with uh, our own graduate and trustee, Bill Whitaker from 60 Minutes. But I think it represents the kind of discourse that's particularly important in today's world. Uh, coming together on a stage with different politics, with different approaches to issues, but where we can 
have in, in, in a, a discussion of import. I think that can be modeled to our students in ways that they can engage difference uh, and think about, in this case, political difference, but as they also prepare for this century that they will live and work in. So I hope that quick overview, there's a lot to cover, but I think it speaks to uh, this moment in our institution's history. I'm grateful to Joyce Jacobson uh, for her service as president these past three years, and we're, we are certainly benefited with her commitment to stay on our faculty in the economics department where she brings her own teaching excellence and scholarship. So I return, I think, aware of challenges that mark higher education. I've, I've retained the, uh, the, the understanding of, of Hobart and William Smith each day. I'm learning much more about this um, current context. But my report to you is that the core mission, certainly the values and how they are exposed and explained and discovered with incoming students. And of course, the commitment and talent of our faculty and staff uh, remains ever thus. Um, your engagement with us at the kind of ways that I suggested will make it an even better place. Um, and so I invite some of the conversations. I know some folks had some questions that uh, Chevy is going to quiz me on. Uh, and I'm sure we will inevitably run out of time, but I would, I would love to engage uh, any questions through phone or my email, garen at hws.edu, where we can gain your perspective and um, hopefully to continue to earn your support and your trust in this very special place. So with that, Chevy, let me turn it over to you and I'm happy to, to be put on the hot seat and answer any questions. <laughs> oh, thank you, President Garen. And as you said, uh, the people want to know, yeah. right? This is what I'm entitling this section. And so um, the first question, and we received many um, is, what are the most important things you've learned since your departure that will impact the way you lead HWS in this second term? Well, I, I think um, one of them I, I covered, and it's, this is the narrow, perhaps parochial, but what I've learned since 2017, vis-a-vis -vis Hobart and William Smith, is a perspective as a parent, because I got to see in a detached way, because I was not here, but seeing our own daughter um, at Hobart and William Smith, her course selection, her faculty engagement, residential education, student, the entire suite of it, the student experience. Um, and as I said, it, it, from my perspective, it showed very well. And it must be noted, these were challenging years at every institution with the pandemic, the decisions, the nature of online, remote, in-person, managing a pandemic in this environment, all of those things highly complex. And so I was impressed with how it was approached and her ability to, to be here in Geneva, to have that mixture of classes, but the, the student experience. At Harvard, we were fully remote for 18 months. So I, I think I come back with that perspective. Secondly, I think it's, it is a perspective that I think we all share. As I tried to say at the outset, this has been a remarkable five years when you consider the societal, civic, global implications of the pandemic, of climate issues, of challenges to our democracy, uh, with the murder of George Floyd and racial reckoning, when you had this rather epic time together, I'm not aware of any sector of society or role, I'm talking to friends and family across all disciplines and professions who will say their job is unchanged. And so coming back, it's very clear to me that all of that has had impact here uh, and all the more impressive things and innovations that have gone forward. Uh, so I, would, I am challenging myself to, to appreciate that it is not 2017, this is 2022 to remind myself of that. Um, Chevy, it was funny. I said to Mary, you know, it, my wife, that it is very uh, common for me to walk into a room and I know where the light switches are because I was here for 18 years. But in that room, many of the people there are new to me and many of the issues are new to me. 
So humbly going forward, um, hopefully accelerating a learning curve to, to bring perspective of five years. And then lastly, when I left here, I immediately went to the Harvard Graduate School of Education as what they call president in residence. And it allowed me the chance to reflect on issues in higher education, lead a seminar, and to work with faculty and scholars in the higher education space. So it really allowed me really for the first time after 18 years to think about and write about and read and study some of the issues uh, in higher education. So I hope that will serve me well as I go forward in this next uh, chapter. Thank you so much um, for that answer. The Perhaps some people would have put this question first. <laughs> and it is, what do you see as your number one priority during this current academic year? It's hmm. a good question. I, I think for any institution that has the kind of, in most private institutions, the work of admissions and bringing in the kind of class of talent and promise um, could not be more important. So our admissions work is, is looms very large. It's important on many levels. It's important for who is in our classrooms um, and working, studying with our faculty and how that uh, fits into this very proud history here. And we're, it's important for our campus life, for how students animate campus life and leadership roles and from athletics to clubs, to organizations, to service work here in, in Geneva. It's critical for our alumni and alumni base, alumni base that um, will engage with students and provide the kind of uh, engagement and mentorship and resources and philanthropy and energy that fuel private higher education. On every level, all of those things are so defined by who is admitted, who is recruited and retained, and obviously the financials associated with it uh, in, in, in terms of what that means. So <clears throat> that's exciting work. And you know, when you look at the achievements here, Princeton Review has just issued again uh, their um, study of talented faculty, and I believe it's for the sixth year now, Robert and William Smith faculty rank among the very best. That is no surprise to many of us, but it is wonderful for the affirmation of the Princeton Review to, to single that out. So I think we have a very compelling uh, and again, authentic story to tell to prospective students and their families. Uh, I invite your own participation in our work along the way. But I think that is, as I look at the landscape of higher education and look internally here through this first month or so, uh, a, a crucial area for us moving forward. Thank you. And and speaking of landscape, and you you mentioned touched on this um, in the first question, a follow up question: the hybrid landscape is shifting significantly, and you've mentioned having time to think about it, do some work, research on it, and having some um, conferences and and so forth. How will Hobart and William Smith adapt and or compete while maintaining? Our own unique uniqueness. Well, I, I'd like to, you know, I think past is prologue. And I think when you look at the history of Hobart and William Smith, there have been various chapters and led by our faculty and leadership of the colleges in a curricular way to ensure that this is in the current context a 21st century education, that it it is truly a liberal arts and sciences education, which we believe is the very best preparation uh, for life. But it also is attuned to the areas of student interest. And I went through some of those that I think are, are very interesting. Data analytics, to aquatic sciences, to um, the burgeoning program and minor in entrepreneurial studies, to our master's work. So there's, there's been notable innovation uh, all within our in, in our in our belief of a, a broad liberal arts and sciences education. So I think I am confident that the kind of faculty conversations that I've had just in, in these few weeks and my conversations with our provost and dean of the faculty is this is a moment of, of real creativity with, 
with our faculty, thinking carefully and thoughtfully of how do we best prepare students? I think it's augmented by global education, where again, 60% of our students will spend a semester out of Geneva around the world. That is a very commendable statistic when our, the national is probably two or 3%. Many of those programs led by our faculty. So that is an important quality when you look at a campus where the global understanding and reach beyond our own borders, both for more than half of our students returning to campus after spending a semester abroad, many of our faculty leading programs around the world returning to campus that that will inform their current classes. That all adds to a very global environment, which I think is a very contemporary uh, approach to any anyone's education as you look to the century that our students will, will live and work in. So, and then finally, I think there's also the opportunities that uh, could be even enlarged in many ways in with our partnership with Geneva. Uh, I think for many years, our community service has been a hallmark and a value uh, that's been well placed and appreciated by Geneva and to the betterment, I think, of our students' preparation. But I also think there's opportunities looking in a curricular way. Um, the Finger Lakes Institute is, is really built up a, a wonderful history. And so this aquatic sciences has, has great opportunity uh, and many of the issues that challenge uh, the broader national landscape are very much present here in micro. And our faculty and our students have the chance to study, to work on, to reflect on. So our students, again, will be prepared uh, for the world that they will graduate into. So I, I am buoyed by what I've seen. I, I think the real responsibility we have in leadership roles here is to be constantly pushing and thinking and, and making sure that it's contemporary to the challenge, contemporary to our students' interest. And when you look over time, curriculums have changed and been informed by events, but we're in a historic area of, of, of issues and movements and challenges from the women's rights movements and civil rights to environmental that has really uh, informed the current day. So. Um, from, from my perspective, there's so much to be done in, in really pretty exciting, innovative ways. So I'm, I'm a little, you know, jealous of all the students because in the early 90s, my study abroad was New York City. I did not get to that far right. away. Okay. And so you, you bring all that learning um, and then certainly um, have a, a, a soft spot in my heart for Geneva and the Geneva City School District and the people here. We talked a bit about um, some of the things that you focused on during your first term, right? Study abroad and community service. And the question from one of our participants is, is there a specific topic or interest um, outside of these two that you may wanna do in your second term? Yeah. You know, candidly, it's it's rather early. You know, I, 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 I um, I am proud of, of what Hobart and William Smith has done in these five years when, when I was away and impressed by that as well, these innovations and areas. Um, I think leadership roles like this that are informed with current aspirations and a community and collective understanding of what that will be. So I'd wanna have more conversations and outreach with, with students as I'm getting to, to know them better in our current faculty and uh, staff colleagues and, and trustees. So I will love the chance to convene again and have, have some more dialogue in and around that. But I, I think our real pillars of excellence here um, remain very much academic excellence and outside the classroom and this rich preparation, those three dimensions of it, I think are enormously important. We can strengthen each and every one of them always. Um, and I'm sure conversations like this and others will, will give us even more and, and better ideas of how to do that. Thank you. A follow-up question, or maybe not necessarily a follow-up question, but um, how is HWS planning to adapt with a smaller high school population applying to college and less 
students on campus. And I think this goes back to your support and talk about admissions and how we need to do in that realm. Right. No, I mean, all small liberal arts higher education with demographics in the Northeast, we know the kind of realities of that. And so I think it puts a, a real premium on the opportunity we have for all hands on deck to be actively engaged and talking about this very special place and organizing events and conversations and meaningful dialogue that really presents us as we are, because I think we have a very fine and compelling narrative to relay to students. I think it has to be authentic because they're investing their treasure, families are in, in higher education and students' time and heartache. So it, it is currently, I think, done in a most appropriate way. Um, but those realities loom for every uh, particularly private uh, institution. But I think the kind of energy that I've seen here in, in the past few weeks, particularly with our faculty members who certainly are, are step in, who really are, are, are very aware of who is in their classroom and who is working with them on research and scholarship. Um, they're prideful of where their graduates uh, go on to study and, 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 and work and lives. So I think that collaborative is really our very best and most organic strength. So I look forward to, to doing that. I, I understand the demographic realities and the challenges of that, but I think it's these are issues we will be very good at because again, this is a place where there is a relationship rich education and our students feel it. And I have seen it with coaches and faculty and staff in the few weeks I've been here. Concur. Uh, shifting gears just a, a little bit. Um, what can the colleges do, President Garion, to support the expression of diversity of viewpoints to counter censorship and cancel culture? Oh, interesting. No, I think this is a, this is a really important um, opportunity for us. And certainly I, in my first time here, worked hard to engage in civic dialogue and, and bring individuals to campus uh, to inform and to challenge uh, all of us with ideas. Um, but the very best of a liberal arts institution is to have that, that opportunity uh, to confirm a view that one might have, to challenge a view that one might have. And um, I think that is the best preparation for, for the world uh, that they will go on to, to live in and hopefully to lead in, in their own ways. Um, one way we, we begin this is in the connection of the Bicentennial with the speakers that we'll have on the 21st, former New Jersey governor, as I said, Chris Christie and James Carville with, with uh, Bill Whitaker. Those kinds of convenings are one way uh, to do that. I think when you look at our curriculum in terms of ideas and in, in the areas of, of study and interdisciplinary study, that is also exposing uh, students to uh, contemporary challenges that exist across various disciplines and solutions and ideas that have been proposed. But I, I take it seriously. This is, this is an important trust that it, students and families have given in us. Um, I am certainly aware that we are also set in a time of great division within our own country. Uh, and we have to acknowledge that. That is, that is different than prior years during my time here. But at our best, certainly at Hobart and William Smith, in honoring our past, we can afford the kind of opportunities for students uh, to engage. That difference of diversity of opinion is one great marker. Some of you know my own journey as an undergraduate, my college roommate, we did not share at all uh, the same politics. But that friendship, now marked by decades, uh, has gone through um, uh, political differences and conversations. And I don't know that we've convinced each other of much, but that is what a residential liberal arts campus community can do. Um, I was struck, Chevy, um, by uh, an event that Mary and I went to at the Smith Opera House recently, 
where it was a documentary on Ukraine that was shown. And in advance of the documentary, the organizers, local Genevans, had asked a Hobart Jr., who was from Ukraine, to speak. And he spoke very, he's a hockey player, great hockey player, the Hobart hockey team. And he spoke very movingly about his, his journey, his family, his mother and younger brother in Switzerland, his father is remaining in Ukraine. He grew up in the second largest city, it's war-torn. Uh, but here, here's, in addition to his impressive remarks uh, in exposing all Genevans and students to his unique uh, and heartfelt experience, what was compelling to me, back to our relationship rich frame, is that the entire hockey team was there in the first two rows. His coaches were there. The William Smith soccer team was there in support of his uh, reflections and their coaches, members of the faculty, emeriti faculty, and the Geneva community, all last Friday night at the Smith Opera House. I don't think that's common. I think that kind of engagement uh, in this issue um, is important to have that kind of dialogue. Another member of his team is Russian, his good friend. So how we organize conversations, how we bring forth the very best of this community around difference, no matter what difference we're talking about. But we can't pretend to say we're graduating students to this century without having those moments. I think it occurs in the classroom. I know it does with this very rich curriculum we have. I think we will continue to work on ways to do it outside the classroom. But to kind of prompt and encourage that reflection of students of how are we doing it. So work to be done, but could not be more important than the times that we live in. And, and that is such an excellent example as to what this community is all about. I have to say, as you're describing that scene, um, got, got a little emotional right here, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about um, what it is that our students uh, take away, not just from the colleges, but from these communities and how those, those various factors come to play. So um, that's part of my love for this institution, right? Or these institutions, so I yep. love that. Yep. Um, a bit on campus life, one question on campus life, President Garen, what can be done for seniors who are isolated in their rooms mm. to help them assimilate to college life where they're coming out of this yeah. COVID space? Yeah, no, I think we're all gonna, we all have to kind of, um, what I spoke to the faculty and staff and our coaches, I talked about at the beginning of the year before students arrived, I talked about a relentless welcome that we must have. Relentless welcome. Because we're coming through extraordinary times. And I think for some, kind of we've lost some muscle of social isolation, of engagement. Um, in many ways, classes and time off and kind of this very uneven experience. Mary and I spent time over orientation weekend at dinners here under the quad. And I talked to students, I said, what was your high school like? These are incoming first year students, right? And you, you, you could feel and hear the interruptions and some hybrid. And, uh, and so particularly my sense of first years is they have roared into college. They have come with great optimism and hope for a very normal mm -hmm. academic experience starting college. I think that's why orientation was so important in all the programs and in really fast tracking their engagement with their first year seminar instructors and getting to know campus. But that relentless welcome must continue. You know, it was uh, very welcome to me to see the kind of weekend uh, start and activities athletically and otherwise. So that relentless welcome is important in any year, but I, I think this is a unique time at this dimension of COVID. And uh, we're fortunate to have uh, colleagues, <clears throat> particularly in our student engagement division, who work very hard to think through ways that, that we can engage students. Um, so I, I think it's a, it's, it is a time that we have to acknowledge of great pain 
uh, and heartache for so many students, particularly seniors and juniors, who feel that they're, they've lost some time. They, they've been robbed of, in some ways, of a, a more normal or expected college uh, experience. And I regret that. As we all know, you can't make up for lost time. What we have to do is to ensure that today's welcome is unrelenting and continued. And then we fashion a campus life and culture <clears throat> that appreciates the challenges that they've faced, but responds to some of the things they're interested in. And that is that is an exciting kind. This is a reset moment of student life. There are traditions that got interrupted that need to be informed or reinformed. There are some things that we should reset, perhaps, that for a better and different and organized way. But we shouldn't totally rely on just the same old, because it is not. As I am reminding myself that it's not 2017 when I left, I think those of us in these leadership roles have the responsibility to think through how can we fashion uh, a campus culture that's resonant for students? How can we organize kind of activities that responds to the rather extraordinary times they've lived in? And how can we bring forth what has always been a hallmark of Hobart and William Smith, a, a vibrant campus life? Um, I'm encouraged by what I see. I, I'm grateful for the kind of support that our students have. I think there's a healthy and understood reflection on the mental health issues uh, that mark this time for so many uh, citizens, but particularly for young people. We have to acknowledge that and provide the kind of support and understanding. Um, and really a time, as I've said to colleagues here, of what I would call radical empathy. We need to, with our colleagues, uh, uh, certainly with our students and all of us, uh, expose that, that empathic time for recognition of what people have been through and much of what we don't even know what's behind that. But um, so I, I am confident that we have the structure. I know we have the character of people to support our students, but it's eternal vigilance. And so I appreciate the, the nature of the question uh, and welcome ideas and suggestions from anyone on this webinar that could could give us good guideposts to, to think about. And with that, President Garen, I just want to say thank you for uh, being here and, and, and responding to the questions that were posed to us by alums and their families and students' families as well as to all of you out there who joined us um, to hear about um, the next 100 years of, of Hobart William Smith and to uh, listen to um, President Garam and his dreams and hopes for the colleges. So with that, I'd like to once again say good evening and thank you and we hope to see you again um, in the near future in person and online. That's great. Thank you, Chevy. Thank you all so, so very much. Look forward to hearing from you. And, and this was a thoughtful conversation. Thank you very much, Chevy. Thank you.